Hey, this is Connor from Biker's Edge. Today we've got a pretty cool video for you. We're talking all about upgrades. What are the best upgrades? Do you even need to upgrade? That's what we're gonna find out. So a couple of weeks ago, I rode a Transition Sentinel that was a Carbon GX version versus an aluminum NX version of the exact same bike. The price difference between those two bikes is exactly $2,000. But that got me thinking, if I had that extra $2,000 to put towards upgrades, how good can I make that cheaper aluminum NX build? So here I've got 2,000, this is actually 17 bucks I found in my jeans the other day, but I got 2,000 bucks for upgrades. Let's talk about which ones I'm choosing and why. So I picked out a couple upgrades that I think give you the best bang for your buck. These are things that you will actually notice out on the trail. So this isn't going from like an X01 to an XX1 cassette for an extra five grams of weight savings. I personally don't think those extra five grams are gonna make any difference to how your bike rides. First upgrade I picked was wheels. I went with a set of MV AM30 wheels. They are a little bit lighter than those stock wheels, but more than weight savings, they offer a performance benefit. They take that heavy aluminum bike and liven it up just a little bit. So these retail for about 1600 bucks. So that was my first upgrade, the biggest in terms of price and also I think performance. The second performance upgrade I went with was a set of carbon handlebars. I just stuck with Envy, so I've got a set of M7 handlebars. Last year I did a video about aluminum versus carbon handlebars. It completely blew my mind how big of a difference carbon bars made. So that was a pretty obvious one here. Those run you about 170 bucks. Not all carbon bars are equal though. Some offer a bit more benefit than others. Some are still really, really stiff and don't feel that much better than aluminum and others feel a hell of a lot better than aluminum. One of my big complaints about that cheaper bike was the braking performance didn't give me a ton of confidence. I didn't have enough budget to do wheels, bars, and brakes. So instead of completely swapping out the brakes for something better, I went with a set of MTX braking red label pads. I think these are gonna give me a bit more power, a bit more modulation, and I think they're going to maybe ease some of my complaints that I had about those lower end brakes. Set of MTX pads is gonna run you 70 bucks for front and back. I also didn't really love the NX shifter derailleur combo. It didn't feel super snappy. It didn't feel quick. So I took 150 bucks and bought a GX shifter and derailleur. And I think for 150 bucks, that's a pretty smart upgrade. And that leaves me with a couple extra bucks that I spent on a Red Bull and Slim Jim because I'm into health and fitness. All right, here we go. Oh, run. Woo. Setting a baseline lap on the Alloy Sentinel before I make all of the upgrades to it. Want to get a good feel for how the bike is in its stock setting before I go messing with stuff. And I am racing the sun. So I got to ride fast, but also smart and not crash because I can't see. <laughs> bike feels really good as is especially for a lower end not super expensive bike pretty stoked about it but I'm also really stoked to see how good I can make it with 2,000 bucks worth of upgrades oh, oh, oh sorry <laughs> I ran into you some ninja stuff right there. You all good? You. All right, here we go. Starting out the test lap now after making all the upgrades. Just to recap, we've got the NV AM30 wheels. 
NVM7 handlebars, MTX red label brake pads, and a GX shifter and derailleur. Those are the upgrades I made. Right out of the gate, the bike obviously doesn't feel massively different. The one thing I can tell right off the bat is the shifting is nice and crisp. It's faster, it just feels a little bit better. And from past experience, you know that GX shifter and derailleur is going to last you a little bit longer. So a little bit of a performance benefit as well as a durability benefit. I wanna think I can feel a bit of a difference in the wheels. They do feel like they're spinning up just a little bit quicker. These wheels aren't really much lighter than the stock wheels. A little bit of weight savings in a wheel makes a big difference because it is sprung and it is spinning. So if you're gonna drop weight on your bike, it's probably the first place to do it. But what I think I'm feeling more than anything is the hub. This is a faster engaging, higher quality hub. And that makes a pretty big difference climbing, especially in the technical stuff. The handlebars, brake pads, and wheels probably be able to feel a lot more difference once we get to the downhill. All right, so overall for climbing, I would say there's a very small noticeable difference in the bike after making all these upgrades. Would I say it's worth 2,000 bucks? Probably not on the uphill alone, but uphill is only half the battle. Or if you're like me, it's the necessary evil to have some fun. And that's where I'm really hoping these upgrades shine. Before we get to the downhill here, at Biker's Edge, we've got some pretty uh, exciting, still top secret news, but if you stay tuned, you will probably find out about it in the next couple weeks. Phew, here we go. All right, so let's start by talking about the wheels. Um, whoo, that was, that was a little zippy. Um, let's start by talking about the wheels here. Sorry, focusing, this is spooky. Um, so, I do really like the wheels. They kind of make this heavy bike feel just a little more lively. Um, I wouldn't call this bike dead and dull by any means. These wheels do help the bike feel just a little bit more lively, a little more snappy. Mostly notice it in the corners, honestly. You kind of get like a better pump out of the, out of the corner. I don't think they make the bike feel quite as lively as that carbon version, you know? So there is something to be said for the full carbon frame, but these wheels do go a long way in making the bike feel a bit more zippy. The uh, handlebars feel great. Super stoked on those. They take a ton of sting out of the trail for you. The best way I can describe it is they almost make it feel like your fork is working just a little bit better, which is a pretty bold claim, you know, for a, a difference in material on handlebars, but that's the best way I can describe it. it makes you feel like your fork's working a bit better, or maybe your front tire's a little bit softer. It just takes a lot of the, the sting and rattle out of the trail. It makes your hands feel a lot better. These brake pads are pretty, surprising as well. Um, I, I wouldn't go as far as saying they make the brakes feel like a premium set of brakes, but they definitely split the difference. They do make the brakes feel better. There's a bit more power, but it doesn't just go like full on off. There's still a lot of modulation with them. I still think if I had the budget, I would buy better brakes. But with the budget I gave myself, these, definitely do the trick. For 70 bucks, they make a pretty big impact on the braking performance. Man, I love this trail. It is so fun. It's got it all. And lastly, with the drivetrain, there's really not a lot to talk about. It's just better. The shifting is more crisp, it's faster, more accurate just better. These upgrades make a bigger difference on the downhill than they did the up. Heading to the Frogger Drop. And this is why it's called the Frogger Drop. You gotta time it between all the cars. The longer you sit up there, the scarier that drop gets. I wanna try to answer the big question. Is it worth the 2,000 bucks put into these upgrades? 
Uh, do you even need to upgrade your bike at all? Are there better upgrades to make? That's what we're gonna try to answer. Let's uh, jump back to the garage and try to answer those questions. Okay, so let's answer that big question. Is it worth putting $2,000 worth of upgrades into your bike or any amount of upgrades into your bike? In my particular case, the bike did get better. Did it get $2,000 better? Yeah, possibly. Um, I enjoyed riding it a little bit more. It felt a little more lively. My hands felt a lot better. The brakes felt quite a bit better. It was better. So if you value those kinds of things, a little more lively, a little more comfortable bike, then yeah, it's probably worth spending a bit of money to make your bike better. Keep in mind though, it doesn't make you better. You're not gonna get better at biking by putting carbon handlebars on your bike or putting expensive carbon wheels on it. It's not going to make you better at biking. It might help you enjoy your bike just a little bit more, but it's definitely not gonna make you better or faster or stronger. That's not how it works. So the aluminum bike did get better, but did it get better than just buying the carbon one in the first place? Personally, if it's up to me, I think I'm spending that extra 2000 bucks at the start just to buy that carbon GX build in the first place. I still think the carbon one is a little more lively and a little more responsive than the aluminum one with all the upgrades on it. One benefit to buying the less expensive one and then slowly upgrading is you can upgrade over time so it's not 2,000 bucks out of your pocket all in one go. If that's the case, this is the order I'd make my upgrades in. I'd start with those carbon handlebars. For 170 bucks, they make a pretty significant difference. So it's not a huge investment and they do change the bike quite a bit. Second, I'd go with the MTX brake pads. Uh, they're again a small investment that make a pretty significant difference and then I'd splurge on those carbon wheels. I think the carbon wheels made the biggest impact on how that bike rode but they're also the most expensive upgrade on the list. The last one I'd do would be the drivetrain and I'd probably just do that once that cheaper drivetrain blows up. So I realized I limited myself to $2,000. If I had more budget to make upgrades before the drivetrain I would actually do brakes. I would put a little higher end, a little bit nicer set of brakes on there, and then I would go for the drivetrain. I didn't really have any complaints about this Fox Rhythm Fork. I kind of fall in the standard weight range for most suspension. That bass tune probably suits me fairly well, so I didn't have any complaints. Some folks are gonna wanna tweak and adjust for every trail. I'm not that kind of guy, but I can see some folks wanting to probably have a, a little bit higher end fork that's going to allow you to dial in your compression and rebound just a little bit more. And beyond that, it seems silly to buy this one and keep upgrading. I would honestly just buy a nicer one to begin with if you're gonna be spending that much money. So some astute viewers may have noticed I have actually have a, an NX shifter on the bike in this video. Um, that is because during my testing laps before I could actually go out and film, I crashed, broke my GX shifter that I put on this bike just for this video, but I did get enough rides on it that I feel comfortable saying that yes, it was better. Don't wanna make you feel like I was misleading you or anything. So to sum it all up, is it worth upgrading your bike? Yes and no. I think if you can afford it, I'd probably buy the little bit nicer one to begin with. If the cheaper one's all you can afford and you wanna upgrade over time, it will make your bike better. It's probably not something worth beating yourself up over to go out and upgrade it instantly or try to make it you know, the best right away. I don't think there's really that much in it in the big picture to upgrade all your components. If you disagree, uh, leave a comment below, which I'm guessing a lot of you will do, and I will make fun of you a little bit in the comments. It's only fair, but uh, thanks for sticking around. We'll see you next time.